I wanted to do a constructional video and I've decided that I'm going to have a go at building a Bitex, a bi-directional transceiver. There's a lot of information about these rigs on the internet, there's been many variants, but I'm going to try and build something very simple. This is not intended to be a detailed construction video, this is more intended to be about the building blocks of a radio transmitter receiver and what the signals look like as the, as the signals migrate through the different parts of the radio. What we've got as a Bitex, as a basic high-level structure, we start off, if we take some RF that we're going to pluck out of the sky on an aerial, we'll pass that through a bandpass filter. In our case, we're going to filter that to 7.0 to 7.2 megahertz, which is the 40 meter amateur band. We're going to amplify that signal, and then we're going to mix it, and we're going to mix it with a variable frequency oscillator, which is going to cover 4.8 to 5 megahertz. Those two will then be added together by the mixer to always make an intermediate frequency of 12 megahertz. We're going to have another amplifier, a crystal filter, yet another amplifier, and then we're going to go through a product detector in the, in the receive case to create audio by mixing it with a beat frequency oscillator. In the opposite direction, we're going to take audio from a microphone and amplify it. We're going to pass it through a balanced modulator with the BFO mixing to create RF at the intermediate frequency of 12 megahertz. We'll amplify and filter that. We'll then mix that once again with our variable frequency oscillator to finally create RF at 7.0 to 7.2 megahertz. So what I want to do is take you through the building blocks of this radio, show you what the signals look like and explain how I'm going to go about making it. I don't intend to use any circuit boards or any kits. I intend to do all of this in a very rough construction using bits and bobs that I've got lying around. The first thing I'm going to do is look at the VFO the low pass filter and the amplifier. I'm going to build a very simple DDS based VFO using an analog device is 9850. You can buy evaluation boards for these from all the usual auction sites for about 12 GBP. I'm going to use an Arduino Zero and I'm going to use a, a fairly fancy color TFT screen. We're going to build a low pass filter and an amplifier to take our 4.8 to 5 megahertz DDS output, amplify it up and create a nice clean VFO. So let's get on with it. On the screen right now you can see the basic building blocks that I've used to build the DDS VFO. On the left hand side we've got an Arduino Zero. I'm using an Arduino Zero because of the processor speed and power. I tried an Uno and I also tried a Nano and neither of those were fast enough to drive this display module that I've got here. The TFT display is a nice color graphics display that we've I've used to make sure that the thing looks nice and posh. They're fairly cheap, they're available currently at around £6 GBP a piece. These boards over here are about £13, although you can get a clone from the Far East for about 7 this is an AD9850 module with a 125 megahertz onboard clock. These are available again, they're about £13 delivered. And this is an El Cheapo rotary encoder. So each stage that we need to build, I'm going to draw a schematic, knock it together on a bit of circuit board and demonstrate the signals in and out and how the thing develops as we make it all. The output of our DDS VFO is going to be passed through a low pass filter to clean it up a bit. I've designed this just using an online calculator. This is a fairly straightforward low pass filter circuit followed by a very basic RF amplifier. I've used an MPSH10 transistor primarily because I've got thousands of them. Any common general purpose NPN RF transistor will do, a 2N2222 for example. Now, what I want to talk about briefly is inductors. So in the low pass filter we've got three inductors, two at 1.4 microhenries, one at 1.5 microhenries. I happen to have used 20 turns of wire on a T5010. Why have I used a T5010? Because I happen to have a load of them here. Now, I would recommend that you get hold of this software called the Mini Wrinkle Calculator. If I used to get really hung up about which cores to use, which thickness of wire, what wire gauge to use, how many turns I needed, all that kind of stuff. You don't need to worry about it too much. Let's say you've got some T56 cores that are pretty common. We know that we want 1.4 microhenries. We put the 1.4 in here. It tells you you need 19 turns. 19 turns on that inductor will be exactly the same as the 20 turns I've got on mine or the 21 on a different core, blah, blah, blah. It really doesn't matter. So don't be afraid to try things and just follow the guidance that this tool will give you. The 
other thing to point out is over here on the output stage of this amplifier we've got what's called a bifiller transformer. That means that we've got two windings intertwisted together before they're wound on the core. You'll also see in some parts of the circuit of the BIDX tri-filler inductors where we've got three wires wound together. I'll drop a quick guide in later that shows how I go about making these. Again, I used to get very scared about getting these things right, but the way that I make them now it's really quite easy and nothing much to worry about and I'll show you how to do it. So here's the low pass filter that we've made and this is what it looks like when we sweep it with the spectrum analyzer. The low level amplifier has been built ugly style and looks like this. The VFO is running on the bench. When you press the uh, rotary encoder, it moves a little chevron along underneath the frequency readout, which changes the step that the VFO is tuning in. It's really quite neat and really quite pleased with the software. It's working very, very well. This is the output of the VFO, nice and clean, and then this is what it looks like connected up to one of my frequency counters. Clearly, when we have the um, VFO set at 4.9 megahertz, that represents 7.1 megahertz on the radio. Let's talk about inductor winding. For the low-pass filter, the inductors are simple, single pieces of wire. Every time that the wire passes through the center of the inductor, you count one turn. This inductor seems to be alive, as I don't seem to be able to hold on to it, but that's one turn, and then when we pass it through a second time, that's two turns. And it's definitely alive. So that's two turns completed on this inductor, and now we've got three. When you finish, spread them out so that they cover about 75% of the core. And then when I've finished, I trim the wires and then I attack it with a Stanley knife to get the enamel off so that we've definitely got bare wire on the ends of the inductor cables as they poke out the bottom of the uh, core. Once I've done that, I then get a nice hot soldering iron and tin the ends of the inductor so that we know that we've got a good connection available when we put it in the circuit. So let's talk about bi and tri filer windings now. Then I tend to take either two or three bits of enameled wire. Different colors is the best thing you can manage so they're easier to sort out later. Pull them together and make a hook in the end. I've got a, a metal hook sticking out of one of the shelves in the shack that I stick the end on. I then pull it taut and stick it in the chuck of one of my drills and then twist. The number of twists per inch and all this kind of stuff is not that critical. Just get it so that it kind of looks about right. And then once you've got a, the, the wires wound together, cut a bit off and again every time you pass it through the center that's one turn. All the inductors in the BIDX that are bi or tri filer are wound on FT 3743s and we go 8 or 10 turns, not that critical. Should look something like that when you've finished. Again, don't worry too much about getting it as neat and tidy as you can, just make it work. So that's it for part one. We've got a VFO, we've got it through a low pass filter and we've got it amplified. In the next part we'll start to look at the band pass filter and the first amplifier and the mixer to get us to our intermediate frequency.